So, <coughs> intellectual property may also provide that certain intellectual property are or certain intellectual property rights are not transferable or not licensable or not assignable. That is for example, we can say that in case of section 18 which was recently amended in the 2012 amendments to copyright law of India, whereby certain rights of the author are not assignable. Intellectual property may provide for additional non-contractual remedies as well which we shall see during the course of this presentation. Now, if we see licensing as a subject of study, we can see it as a limb of intellectual property system. We can also see it as a limb of commercial law and if we adopt a unified approach, licensing has also become a unique discipline in itself because there are certain legal professionals who identify today as licensing professionals only. So, licensing has become quite complex in the modern context and there are organizations like Licensing Executive Society International which enrolls members who are licensing professionals who practice this discipline of licensing worldwide. Now we come to the contractual aspect of a license. Contract is the vehicle of license. Contract is the only means to affect an intellectual property license. There is no other way, it has to be a contract. Now all the essentials that are the required that are required to be complied with in case of a normal contract, in case of an ordinary contract are also required in case of a license. Now there are certain aspects which need a little more scrutiny. For example, writing is a contract required to be written down to be enforceable to become valid? No, as far as the general contract law is concerned writing is not the requirement. An oral contract is as enforceable and as valid as a written contract. But certain intellectual property statutes for example, the Copyright Act and the Patents Act require that the contract should be in writing. Contract of the license, intellectual property license has to be in writing to be enforceable. That means, if the contract relating to intellectual property is not in writing, then it may not be enforceable. Certain statutes also require in addition to writing the requirement of signatures. Normally, no notice of the contract is required to be given to any party. Further, as far as registration is concerned, some intellectual property statutes require registration and some make it optional. Even if the, a particular intellectual property statute has no mechanism for the registration of a particular license, as a legal document it can always be registered under the registration act of 1908. Now, what is the relationship between licensor and licensee? First, the relationship is contractual. Further, there is no assumption of fiduciary character between or fiduciary relationship between the licensor and the licensee. It is a contract between a principal and a principal. The licensee is not necessarily an agent of the licensor. The contract is between principal and principal. Rights of licensee flow, flow from intellectual property law as well as the contract law. Now, what are the types of licenses? First, license could be exclusive. An exclusive license is very similar to assignment. Now, what is an exclusive license? Exclusive license is a situation whereby the owner of intellectual property agrees with the other to grant a license exclusively. That means, the owner of the property says that I shall not grant any other license to anybody else. Further, the owner promises that he himself shall not be exploiting that intellectual property which is the subject of an exclusive license. So, that means, the licensee becomes the only person entitled to exploit the licensed intellectual property in case of an exclusive license. Opposite of it is non-exclusive license. Non-exclusive license is only a promise, is just a promise by the owner not to sue the licensee. There is no promise that he will not grant any other license to anybody else or he himself will not be utilizing his property in future. So, non-exclusive is the opposite of exclusive. Sole, sole license is somewhere in between. Sole license is a genre of non-exclusive license only. So, license means that the owner of intellectual property says that you shall be, says to the licensee that you shall be my only licensee. 
That means the owner cannot issue any other license to anybody else, but he himself remains free to exploit his property. Now statutory license we have already seen where the statute itself grants you a license on return of fulfillment of certain conditions which it, it is lays down. We have also seen what is a compulsory license. For example, the patent law allows or creates a mechanism for the issuance of compulsory license in case of public health emergencies, etc. These are the important aspects or types of licenses. Now the division of license rights, it could be divided in four, any license could be divided in four ways. One is geographical. That means you can divide the licenses over the same property geographically. For example, you have a product and you can allow somebody to sell it in one particular geographical area and the other to sell it in another geographical area. So for example, I am the author of a book. I can allow one publisher to publish it for America and another publisher to publish it in India in the same language. The division of ri license rights could also be temporal. For example, I can allow, I have a new technology and I obtain a patent on it. I can grant a license to a manufacturing entity to manufacture and market the technology that I had invented for 5 years and thereafter that entity will not be entitled to do the same. So it can be divisible on temporal basis. Then substantive, I can divide because intellectual property is divisible. The rights that are granted under intellectual property are divisible. For example, I write a book, I can allow X to make a film on the book, I can allow Y to translate the book, I can allow Z to adapt the book. So different aspects of the rights can be apportioned differently. Then field of use, I can, if I am the inventor of a technology and obtain a patent on this, then I can allow, I can license X to utilize it in the field of medicine, I can allow Y to utilize it in a field which is something very different from medicine. So field of use could be different and it could be apportioned and divided on the basis of field of use. Now what is the difference between license and assignment? Now the nature of transfer is very different. Assignment can be analogized with sale and license can be analogized with rental. For example, I have a house, if I sell it, it will be called an assignment in, in relation to intellectual property and if I allow somebody to make use of it, it will be like hiring, giving the house on hire. The title, the licensee of intellectual property gets no title to intellectual property, whereas the assignee gets the same title as the owner, he himself becomes the owner. The right to sue, normally a licensee has no right to sue the infringer of intellectual property, but some statutes like Copyright and Patents Act have granted limited rights of suing to, of pursuing the infringers, those limited rights are available with certain kinds of licenses like exclusive licenses. Otherwise, the licenses have no rights, no independent right to sue the infringer or pursue the infringer, whereas the assignee always gets the right to sue the infringer. Now breach and infringement, in case of breach and infringement, the rights and responsibilities of the breaching parties are quite different if he is a licensee or an assignee. The consideration for license is usually in the form of periodical payments known as royalties and the consideration for assignment is usually in the form of a lump sum payment. Now how to know whether a contract is a license or an assignment? What is the importance of a label? For example, a contract is styled or labeled as a license. Would it always be a license? Well, no, it is not necessarily so. It is the substance of the contract that determines whether it is a, con whether it is a license or an assignment. It is not the talismanic phrase by which it is styled or described that would always be determinative of its nature as a license or assignment. It is the content, it is the substance of the contract. It is the rights that, that are transferred that would determine whether the contract is a license or assignment, the manner of transfer and the intent of parties. Importance of label is there, but label itself cannot in itself decide whether a contract was a license or an assignment. Now we come to trademark licensing, certain examples from trademark licensing. Now in the beginning of trademark law, if we trace the history of trademark law, licensing was not permitted because 
At that time we went by the theory of single source function. That means a trademark was required to identify the source of the product. Uh, so if the product was emanating from A and henceforth A licenses the, his trademark to B, then the consuming public would always think that the product is coming from A. Thereby it will consume, it will confuse the consuming public. This is why licensing was not permitted and specifically prohibited in the trademark statutes before 1930s. But then with the development of trademark law, the consumers of were more concerned with the quality of product than with the source of product. If I want to consume a bottle of a soft drink, I am more concerned about the quality. As long as I get the same quality which is, which is made by the Coca-Cola company, I am satisfied whether it comes from any other source with the authorization of Coca-Cola company. So this shift in the nature of consumer behavior and shift or development in the trademark law allowed licensing for the first time in 1930s. So thereby it was stated that as long as the quality of the licensee's goods are controlled or regulated by the licensor, licensing is permitted. Now that means the licensor was required by law and is still required by law to maintain the quality of the products or the services of the licensee. That means what? Should the product or services of the licensee be of the higher quality or the highest quality? No. The measure of the quality should be the same as that of the licensor. If the licensor is providing X quality, then law expects the licensee also to provide X quality because in this case the consuming public will not be confused. And then with the mercantilizing function of trademarks, licensing of trademarks has come full circle. In the modern world, what is mercantilizing? For example, when I take my kids to the market to buy a t-shirt, they are specifically interested in a t-shirt which contains the logo of their favorite cartoon character. So what has happened? For example, they want a t-shirt with Mickey Mouse printed on the t-shirt. Has Walt Disney Company which owns rights over Mickey Mouse produced that t-shirt? No, certainly not. Walt Disney Company produces films, not t-shirts. So what has happened in this case is that Walt Disney Company has authorized or has licensed an independent manufacturer of t-shirts to put that label on the t-shirt, to put that logo on the t-shirt. Now this happens only because of licensing. Now we have moved away from quality control function because in this case because quality function stated that the, the quality of the licenses, licensee's goods should be similar to that of licensor in order for licensing to be permitted. Now in this case Walt Disney company has never produced t-shirts. So how can we measure the quality of the t-shirts with the quality of the film? So we are going beyond the quality function in trademark law. Now licensing of registered and unregistered trademark both is permissible. The Trademark Acts of Act of 99 in India contains elaborate provisions regarding the registered trademark being licensed, whereas the licensing of unregistered trademarks is mostly governed by the common law of passing off. Now in case of registered trademarks, the statute, the Trademarks Act provides elaborate mechanism of its registration and there are various advantages that flow from registration. Whereas it is not, the statute has not made it compulsory for a license to be registered. There is another fundamental principle in case of uh, a trademark license. It is that the use made of the mark made by the licensee always inures to the benefit of the licensor. Section 48 subsection 2 states that the permitted use of a trademark shall be deemed to be used by the proprietor thereof and shall be deemed not to be used by a person other than the proprietor for the purposes of section 47 or for any other purpose for which such use is material under this act or any other law. Now what is the meaning of this legally speaking? We say that one, if A is the owner of a trademark X and A allows B to use X for its own purpose, then who shall have the rights on the basis of that use of the trademark? The law says it is A and B shall not amass any trademark rights on the basis of his use of the mark X by virtue of being a licensee. So in order to summarize, we can say that licensing is the most important activity that happens 
in case of any intellectual property. An intellectual property is created ultimately for its exploitation and one of the most important means of exploitation of intellectual property is licensing. Licensing is of various kinds like exclusive license, non-exclusive license, sole license, statutory license, compulsory license or cross license. Now there are fundamental differences between assignments and licenses. Both assignment and licenses are contracts, but they entail very different legal consequences. A license can be analogized to a rental of a car, whereas an, ass uh, an assignment can be analogized to a sale of the car. Thank you very much.